Oh, we have a huge trade. Russell Wilson is now a Denver Bronco. We're going to talk all about the fantasy implications of that move. Going to talk Aaron Rodgers, Carson Wentz, Mike Williams. So much happening in the NFL, and we're going to answer some questions as well. Make sure you like, subscribe, enjoy the show. Unlimited. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Thursday, March 10th. The Fantasy Footballers back with you. Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway. I would like it on the record. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Get the uh, what is it, stenographer. Yes, please. I strongly considered the <laughs> it's birthday time in to celebrate the life and the rotations around the son of Al Borland. Right. Mm. Because at the time of this recording, it is actually his birthday. Yeah. But the moment the listeners are hearing this, it is not his birthday. Mm -hmm. Now he's I, just an old man. I just want him to know that I acknowledge your birthday, but you do not get it's birthday time because the show is not releasing on your birthday. In That's case fine. you were confused, Al. Yeah. I appreciate you. I got a shout out on a really huge podcast, so I appreciate it. Mm. Which podcast? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, welcome into the show. Obviously, a lot happening around the NFL right now, especially with the quarterback position. So that's we're going to talk about all the fallout of, of some blockbuster trades. A reminder, today, if you're listening to this on Thursday, March 10th, this is the final chance to get in on the Listener League giveaway at ultimatedraftkit.com. So uh, pre-orders, the, the UDK itself launches June 1st. The Dynasty Pass is available now, which is part of the UDK Plus. But if you get the UDK before the end of day today, you will also be injured to win a Listener League spot to play with us. And, of course, you'll get it at the lowest possible price. So head over there at ultimatedraftkit.com. Instagram question comes in. It's producer-related, so I'm surprised we don't filter those out. But it says, with the wide array of nicknames for your producers, I'm not entirely sure how many there are. Can you give us a rundown? There are 22 <laughs> producers here. <laughs> we have, uh, it's funny, I have heard this quite a bit, actually. The biggest thing that I have heard that is inaccurate mm -hmm. is that there is but one mm. with two nicknames. Yes. So some believe that Brooks, a la Judge Giamatti, is also Al Borland. And I am here today the day after the birth of a one Al Borland to formally let you know there are two two of them back there. Yeah, so you have uh, Owl Borland, who is Jeremy, mm -hmm. and you. Ha so those are the, the two main producers, and then we brought on the Borgogan, as we refer to him. Uh, the editor-in-chief sometimes is his nickname, uh, Kyle Borgognoni. Which you can see by the last name, that's why we have changed it. That's right. We yeah. we have some difficulty with it. So so Brooks Brooks was the OG producer. We call him Judge Giamatti. We've had segments on the show where he has been the judge mm -hmm. and settled debates for us. Fantasy court. And uh, Al Borland is kind of, I mean, he's a jack of all trades. He's great. Master of none. At yes. the production yes. side of things. Uh, great with all the tech stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he gets Al Borland because Al Borland was very uh, capable on the old home improvement show of doing repairs and things, and he's done a lot of that well, stuff. Well, that was for it. Al Borland, and then on yeah, the spitballers, it, it changed. It to just Al. became Al. I don't know why. Yeah, and and here, if you would like to follow <laughs> our producers on Twitter, you can follow Brooks at Whoa. Brooks Carmine. You can follow uh, Owl at Producer Borland and Kyle at Kyle underscore Borg. Am I right on those three? Yep. Pfft, amazing. And Kyle will be coming soon to a microphone near you. Now, okay, so then, uh, this is a we'll question see. here. You filter the, his response for me, Jeremy. Was Kyle Borg taken? <laughs> like, you needed the underscore? Um, That was not available? He's typing. 
Oh, well, God, no, I said filter the response. I was looking for a response. He said okay. there are other Kyle Borgs. Okay. It's okay. a really popular name. <laughs> Yeah, All I, right. I imagine he he had plenty of Star Trek jokes in his early days. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Twitter, Resistance is futile. Uh, Twitter the uh, uh, at the FF Ballers. <laughs> Hot start today, fellas. Yeah, well, in every day, in every day. Uh, today is more of a um, unlimited an unlimited day. I forgot that there's a graphic on yeah. the on the YouTube for that. Audio unlimited. Why did we give him those eyebrows? Uh, he's got just ferocious <laughs> eyebrows. Yeah, the quarterback carousel <laughs> has been insane the last few days. It's a lot really of fun. fun. Yeah. Let's just let's just get right into it. Let's do it. Russell Wilson was traded. So that sentence was yes! was unbelievable. Um, the Broncos have acquired Russell Wilson in a fourth rounder. They traded away Drew Locke. No, oh. no offense. Defensive tackle Shelby Harris, two first round picks, two second round picks, and a fifth round pick. So it's it's hefty in terms of of draft picks. Really, I don't know that. Like, okay. I don't know that there's an actual price you can put on a Hall of Fame caliber franchise quarterback who still has multiple years left of his career. He's thirty three. The Seahawks uh, have been his home his entire career. Obviously, the the Super Bowl championship yeah, also the, went to another one. That time that he totally lost one. Let me ask you a question. If you had – so they got just two firsts, right, and two seconds. Yeah. If you used all four of those picks on quarterbacks, what are your odds of getting a Russell Wilson? Very low. Very, very low. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Russell Wilson, I think – uh, will be a first ballot Hall of Famer. He is I th I think he gets another Super Bowl. This is a great team for him and I think the the Denver Broncos are going to allow Russell Wilson to cook, to open it up, to um show how good he is. Obviously, he was terrible at the end of last year. The question becomes is he falling off or was that the injured hand? I believe it to be the injured hand. There um, was before you get into your adoration cuz I know where you're heading with Russell Wilson to Denver and we're going to talk about I want to talk about all the fantasy implications. But before that, before the hand, there was a, a period that I'll call the overcooked Russell Wilson. The back half of the previous year, he also uh, had a a slowdown. You remember this? Mm -hmm. Where DK Metcalf came out on fire and, and, and the team was throwing the ball a ton and then interceptions started to happen. So um, it's easy to say let Russ cook almost in the way that it was like let a running back with a high yards per carry on limited touches start to run. Lamar Miller or C.J. Spiller or some of these guys. But you don't know what they are in that capacity till you let them do it for a season. So first, do you expect Denver to move? How far does the pendulum swing in terms of passing volume for Russell Wilson and then what are the what's the fallout here? Who who are the big winners in Denver? Yeah, I, well the the biggest winners in Denver are the pass catchers, right? You've got Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy and Tim Patrick, but the main two, Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy, go from you know someone that I I really don't even want to draft. I don't want to have to roster these guys and deal with Drew Locke or whoever the mediocre quarterback is trying to get him the ball based on the wide receivers talent, blah blah blah. To now these are fellas that I think are going to have great seasons. I mean, Russ is going to throw for 30 touchdowns, and you divide those up among those receivers. Noah Fant exits in this trade, so it gives a little bit of clarity to the pecking order. So I, I think that there's a lot of fancy value to be had. As far as the pass-run thing, I, I don't think that this – this is a team that's great at running the ball. Javante Williams, they might bring back Melvin Gordon still. We'll have to wait and see. I don't think that they're going to – just say, oh, we're we're gonna pass it nonstop, which was, is which is Nath good for Russ. Nathaniel Hackett over the past two seasons as an OC in Green Bay, top ten in neutral pass rate. Yeah, so I I mean the reality is I would be two with Aaron Rodgers, right? And I sure, think he but, will be two with but Russell now you have Wilson. Russell Wilson, yeah. Whereas no, the agree. Seahawks over the last decade, they've really wanted to be a defense and run the ball team that that allows Russ to kind of 
play mop up duty and and finish the games. And so, uh, for fantasy purposes, I believe Russell Wilson is in for a a very big fantasy year. Top I, five? Uh, yeah, I think that's in the in the cards. Um, uh, we'll we'll stat all these players out on every team once free agency and the draft is over and see where he lands. I, I'm certainly not calling him guaranteed top five right now, but hopefully this last the last part of last year. You know, I I think we, but I know I was saying um, trade for Russell Wilson and Dynasty because, I, you know, I think that there's brighter, greener pastures ahead. And I'm very sad that uh, these pastures are bright. That these Brooks pastures are green. They're filled with passes. Yeah. They're pastures. They're pastures. Neon yeah. green. Yeah. Well, not anymore. <laughs> uh, so, obviously, if you were holding Cortland Sutton, Jerry Judy, I mean, this is make or break for Judy in terms of fantasy value because you have everything you need and you should see the leap, right? There there are some questions to be answered from Jerry Judy for sure. because it's one thing to be super athletic and have the draft capital. It's another thing to perform on the field. One thing we've seen from Tim Patrick is as little fanfare as he gets, quarterbacks seem to like him. He doesn't Quarter drop passes. Quarterbacks seem to love him. And, and Albert Aguabanon is going to have an opportunity to be a red zone force with Russell Wilson, something we've seen before. Not Hard to be under – like, I'd go pick him up in a dynasty league if you thought you could. Sure, for cheap. But the the sentiment I'm seeing on Twitter is people are – like, I've seen more excitement for Albert O, personally. It could just be anecdotally, but Al, Albert O, I've seen more excitement for him than the other actual wide receivers on this team. I think that the – I think the pendulum is swinging – way too far for what he will be in this offense. Yeah, you could be right. I think part of the problem, maybe not problem, part of the challenge is identifying who you really think is going to be worth what pick. <laughs> because uh, yeah. it's not like you're not going to have value there. They're going to be very impactful. And I would put them Sutton, Judy, Patrick. I, I would as well. When you combine what I think the depth chart looks like with opportunity, upside, ceiling. Talent. The ceiling for Judy is much higher than Patrick. But if we went out there and, and Tim Patrick had more total receptions than Jerry Judy and the same amount of touchdowns, I wouldn't be shocked just based on the how, how the offense goes. You know, one thing that's interesting about this trade, the, the Denver Broncos are a franchise that is trying to sell they're they're like on the market right now to sell the so this this trade makes oh, as so, a team not yes, players as a, yes they're, as a team the franchise itself is basically available for purchase so if you're looking to you know get into the an nfl get a, team if get you're a out kickstarter there kickstarter going here yeah we should get a kickstarter i would love to own the denver broncos so if you're interested in a team with a great quarterback they're for sale if you w if you were looking for draft picks they're not well that's, as attractive. that's what's so funny is they the current ownership doesn't really care about the future right <laughs> they care if it, like the oh we lost a lot of picks in the future not my problem we're, we're better super bowl contenders now the value goes up it's really hard to argue with the recipe right now in the nfl the recipe for tom brady and the in the buccaneers they they win a championship they go all in on, on veterans and uh you know brady obviously then you follow that up with the the Rams who have been doing this for years, you know, selling future assets to pick up the the you know Von Miller and Matthew Stafford in the off season, and the Broncos have already used the recipe. It was it was Peyton Manning. I mean, they they went out right. and they got the elder statesman quarterback, and obviously Russ is younger than Manning was when he arrived. But this is it'll bring us into some other discussions I want to have about quarterbacks. I got to flip it to the other side because there are kind of uh, – there's a lot to talk about for Seattle. Where there is happiness on one side, there is much sadness on the other. <laughs> Shout out to our intern. <laughs> yeah, and, and look, Jerry Judy had the ride already. He had yeah, one, yes he did. one sad tweet when Aaron Rodgers signed a deal with the Packers, something to talk about, uh, and then happiness when Russ arrived. There are tweets unsent from Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf right now. They've written them, but mm -hmm. they know better, they right? Their that, agent, they got the they got that Twitter blue. Yeah, they got so, the ten seconds to un untweet, but they don't feel confident here. This is not a trade for Drew Lock. This is a trade that included Drew Lock. So 
you look at the long-term implications, you have a quick reaction. You're not going to have rust there. But there are rumors. There's discussion. This is not a team that's going to sit on their hands. They did let Bobby Wagner go. It could be full rebuild, but if they can, you know, is it Deshaun Watson? Yeah, Watson is the biggest question mark here, which if you haven't seen the news, Deshaun Watson has a uh, grand jury case on Friday. Am I saying that correctly? I believe there is a grand jury case. Uh, on Friday with a possible indictment to come. Right. So if there will everyone will be under Sean Watson watch on Friday because uh, th this could be massive implications for either a positive future or a negative future for Deshaun Watson in the NFL. Uh, they have a – like Seattle has a ton of picks. They could potentially flip those. If Deshaun Watson is cleared and back on an NFL field, Seattle could go after him. But other than that, uh, there's also the the rumors swirling around of Tyler Lockett is available if somebody wants to come trade for him. I would imagine they don't trade Lockett yet until they know the future of uh, like someone like Watson because that's a that's just an instant. You're still a contending team, but it, it, but the, but I it could be a full tear down to the nubs. Yeah, I, I'm I Sorry, mean, Jason. Uh, go ahead. You know, if you look at what the franchise did the last time they needed a quarterback, which hasn't been a while thanks to Russ, they went out and they signed Matt Flynn. They and then they drafted. You know, they took kind of a little bit more of a shotgun approach, and they got lucky with drafting Russell Wilson, him being great, and then they they made that move. So, I, you know, the fact that they got Drew Locke, he is there. Um, they got the number nine pick. So, in this year's quarterback draft class, it's it's potential that they could have the number one quarterback the quarterback of their pick that no one in the top eight picks selects a quarterback um so I think you could see a shotgun approach here if the Deshaun Watson every single team we're talking about like what that needs quarterback the Deshaun Watson thing is going to be true for all of them but that is you know probably not the outcome for you know that teams can bank on I also just don't know if I believe that the oldest NFL head coach in Pete Carroll has the stones for a rebuild. No, oh, he gone. Well, he ain't gone now. No, he's not, but uh so, talk, I mean, talk to me next year. I mean, if he, but his interest is my point. He's the coach. He has an interest in the roster. If he's got a year left, why is he trading away a franchise quarterback? It makes me believe that this team will still be aggressive. It's just a matter of what that's going to mean. And if you have DK Metcalf or Tyler Lockett, you are in a holding pattern. You're not going to go. You're not going to go sell them in a dynasty league on for pennies on the dollar. Correct. It's not like Metcalf didn't have big games with Geno Smith last year, and they could bring Geno back. Like Geno is currently a free agent. You but should never have said it with that of a that much of a positive count. It was too. No, it, was, it, was it was too, too positive. positive. It was too positive. It was Try too it positive, again. Yeah. Try it again. They might bring Geno back. Okay, tell me more. They, that was nice. <laughs> yeah, that was right on the head. That's perfect. Well, then, let me let me ask you this: Gino or Drew Locke? Is yes, that what you're going to say? That is exactly what I'm going to ask. If you you got DK Metcalf, you're hoping they bring Gino back. Yeah, you are. So it's not Drew Locke. Drew Locke is there to to be one specific role, which is the Matt Flynn for this roster, so that mm. they can draft their Russell Wilson and I'm, hopefully never play him. I'm guessing that that was like in, in Denver insisted. They're like, we're going to put Drew Locke in this trade. They're like, well, well, we don't. We're going to look elsewhere for a quarterback. We don't really need him. Yeah, but we're going to send him. Yeah, you're taking him. <laughs> Get him out of here. Yeah, I I, uh, I, think that it's worth, you know, it, it is a hold. You're not selling DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett because you're getting nothing for them. But alternatively, if you don't have them and you're in a dynasty league, it might be worth kicking the tires to see if the, the manager is freaking out. You know, if you've got Gabe Davis – who's the you know the hotness and could become the number two and you can flip them for Tyler Lockett or something like that I I would I would be willing to try to buy for pennies on the dollar again for cheap I am pretty much you know in a redraft league until the quarterback clarity happens and I don't think it will happen for Seattle I'm 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 not going to be really in on DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett with a mediocre quarterback there's also at least from what I've seen from lines around the team it's not an easy path to trade Tyler Lockett after that extension. I mean, he's going to be a very significant cap hit. I don't know if it'll happen yet. Sure. So um, I wouldn't bet on it, I guess. Yeah, but 20, Tyler Lockett's 29. 
Uh, he's still under contract for a few years. But, yeah, I, I don't know how it would work out where his dead cap hit right now would be 31. So I would imagine Seattle would take on some dead cap even if they trade him away. It just seems really hard to imagine that. Um, I've heard maybe two years away when he's a 14 million cap hit. So that's the big, big, big trade that took place and changes the landscape. You look at the AFC West. Derek Carr is sitting on the bottom of the quarterback pecking order with, you know, he had the the buffer, the Drew Locke buffer from the bottom of the division. And now Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert, these quarterbacks will be giving us the gift of squaring off against each other multiple times a year. That's part of the fantasy greatness here is that you've got six games a year, you know, you, where for you're, Russ to have to keep up it, with those guys. Exactly. And those guys to keep up with Russ. It's going to be fantastic for fantasy. And um, as Arizona Cardinal fans, heck yeah, man. <laughs> Let's not have the <laughs> NFC West be the best division. Let's have the AFC West. And the bigger news that broke first was that Aaron Rodgers is staying with the Packers. Uh, whether this was what you expected or not, the official nature of it, it changed a lot. You wonder if the Broncos were holding out here to pull the trigger on this trade that they had negotiated. Seems like they were. Oh, yeah. They, they, he was the domino they were waiting for. It was like uh, Nathaniel Hackett and that team, I think they were hoping they were in the running as soon as it came out that Aaron Rodgers was staying in Green Bay. It's like, okay, let's go. Let's go, 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 go. And so Rodgers, the contract terms are not confirmed yet as of this recording. It was originally reported to be a four-year, $200 million deal. But he came out and tweeted, yes, I'm back with the Packers. The contract's not signed. Because, of course. Yeah, if you read the Aaron Rodgers tweet, yeah, it's the, the quote of, as are the supposed terms of the contract, I quote, signed. So do we have another immunized situation going on? Because he's like, I haven't actually oh, signed maybe he it. autographed them? Or no, he's just... <laughs> <laughs> or they just have agreed to it, and he hasn't actually physically signed the piece of paper yet. Uh, so yeah, but we're we're waiting for the real terms to come out. He'll be back. Official terms. Devontae Adams is back. Franchise tag. Chris Godwin. Franchise tag. Mike Gesicki. Dolphins tight end back on the franchise tag. As is Dalton Schultz, tight end for the Cowboys, who looks poised to maybe be the secret biggest beneficiary of oh, Amari Cooper sure. departing. Everyone's going to talk about CeeDee Lamb, and, and maybe they bring back um, – I know Gallup's coming Cedric back. Cedric Wilson. But Cedric Wilson could it, come back. Last I had seen on Cedric Wilson is he will they'll be priced out. I think they love Dalton Schultz. I really do. He's and a I, solid player. And so I think he will have a great opportunity for fantasy relevance again. Rodgers back with the Packers. Another trade broke yesterday. Carson Wentz acquired by the Washington Commanders. Commanders. And this trade, uh, the Colts, they got a decent amount for Carson Wentz. For a player that they did not want on their team, I think they did okay. Yeah, for a team that they weren't even very good at veiling that they didn't want on their team. <laughs> like, there was not a really good sense of, like, no, nobody, we want him around. I respect it. Yeah, Good no, for you. Yeah, absolutely. Nobody thought that the Colts liked Carson Wentz like not and I don't I don't mean I mean they even just liked him they did not they I mean they wanted him out of town as soon as possible and they did a great job they uh were able to get rid of him now their current quarterback situation is worse uh they are going to be an active you know sometimes there are teams out there who their quarterback situation is bad and you just know it's going to be bad this is a team where they're going to be aggressive they they have a, a winning franchise a good roster and they need that quarterback so right now the quarterbacks that are available you can either trade for like a jimmy garoppolo um yeah define being aggressive in the current landscape of the market now because a lot of uh dominoes have fallen and being aggressive means what? Being aggressive means trading for Jimmy Garoppolo. That's <laughs> that's what it means. I mean, you that's could try a, to go after Kirk Cousins. I don't think they would do that, and I don't think Minnesota is looking for that. In free agency, you're talking about Mitchell Trubisky. That, w that was my prediction was that he would end up in the Colts. Uh, Mariota. Mariota's Winston. out there. Uh, so it's, it's not great. There is not a perfect answer, but uh, Jimmy Garoppolo does make a lot of sense here for a team that wants – 
someone who can come in and win games and be a good leader. And I think they're going to put leadership near the top of their importance based on having just had Carson Wentz. Yeah, I mean, it's difficult when you look at what they've faced the last five years. I don't know if you can dig up that tweet that, that outlaid the starting quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts, oh, but it's been a different a, one every year. It's been a different one for five. This will be the sixth consecutive year. So you had Andrew Luck, you had Jacoby Brissett, you had Phillip Rivers, you had Carson Wentz. There's another one Scott or Scott Tolzien. Yeah. So, <laughs> and then this year is going to be a brand new quarterback. So, yeah, it's, it's, I, I don't know who you're going to find. I, I agree with you. I think Jimmy Garoppolo is somebody that can protect the football maybe better than Carson Wentz, make, maybe make some better decisions or function within the offense that Frank Reich puts into place. He, Garoppolo did a great job handing the ball off uh, for the San Francisco 49ers. I think he can give that ball to Jonathan Taylor really well. I think he'll do, do it right, at, right in the box. Just exactly where he needs that ball. Yeah, I did a good job throwing the ball to Debo Samuel. So maybe, you know, you land to him and Michael Pittman. Hopes and dreams are still there because right now we had some debate in the office. You can say whatever you want about the season, good, bad, or ugly for Carson Wentz. I think it was all three. 27 touchdown passes, seven interceptions. Uh, should have been in the playoffs. Fell on his face against Jacksonville. That is a sting that clearly ran right into the offseason. If he does, if he wins that Jacksonville game, he is with this team. That's, yes, that is correct. Yeah, I agree. And so, so the flip side now, yes, Washington, the Manders, uh, Terry McLaurin. Uh, is this good news for Terry McLaurin? One of my things to remember leaving last season was that mediocre quarterbacks are not the answer for fantasy value of the receivers. There's going to be a lot of hope, a lot of hype, a lot of uh, good narratives written, but. You know, in the end, when it when they're not a great quarterback, they're not really going to move the needle. Um, he is an upgrade, though, over Taylor Heineke. But you're right, not by much. And <laughs> and teams are, are teams are tripping over themselves to get mediocrity. And I guess I was going to ask that question uh, from a ten thousand foot view for you. Would you ever be that team? Would you ever go middling quarterback solution at the NFL level? When you know it never works, yeah, you never ever succeed with that. Yeah, well, it just depends on what the definition of succeed is. Because, the Colts last year. Yeah, if you're talking about win a Super Bowl, Derek Carr is not going to win a Super Bowl. You know, these these Kirk Cousins is not going to win a Super Bowl. But if you're saying I can be a really relevant franchise that can try to win the division, make the playoffs, make some noise, have some good years of football, I you know honestly I would try to get a quarterback like that that could do that. And when you've got a good defense like the the commanders can have, it kind of fell off last it year. Did, yeah. uh, they were an inch away from the division uh, from uh, making the playoffs over the Eagles last year. So Carson Wentz is a big upgrade here, even if he is never going to be a Super Bowl um, answer here for the commanders. What's worse, trading away Russell Wilson or trading for Carson Wentz? What's worse is trading away Russell Wilson. Yeah, I, there's I, not many Russell Wilsons. I agree. I think it is both are bad, in my opinion. <laughs> like trading away unlimited. Thing. There's only one. The Russ. The hard part about trading for Carson Wentz is it delays you finding your answer at quarterback even more. Where like Seattle is now actively looking for the future. Carson Wentz is just he's another stopgap for Washington it feels ident that's a great point and it feels exactly like Carolina's decision last year right where it delayed the future one mm -hmm. more year for Carolina when you tried to solve your problem with Sam Darnold Carson Wentz will not solve the problem and yes you were close to winning the division but your division was really bad yeah and I and I think for fantasy I think Terry McLaurin's going to be more of what he was a very good wide receiver with some good fantasy games, not a dominant, awesome, he takes that leap up, very similar to that same comp. What you saw in DJ Moore last year, had some good games, finished as a decent wide receiver on the season, but was a disappointment. I, I think that's what you're going to have for fantasy um, you know, here. So as an NFL franchise, if you were Denver last year and you were staring down the Teddy Bridgewater decision, or Washington this year, 
Would you rather trade for the stopgap because of your draft positioning, right? Not not every team has a top five pick, top 10 pick to go grab the quarterback you want. Or would you spend the first round, late round? I mean, I can think of Buffalo with EJ Manuel in the late first. That didn't work out. So would you rather spend that first round pick on the shot? Yeah, I would always. Well, no, I would. And give them the starting job on day one. I would rather take the veteran over the late first rookie. Okay. It, I think it puts – Washington can win right now. So getting getting Carson Wentz, they – I mean, they clearly think he's a, enough of an upgrade over Taylor Heineke that they can potentially make a playoff push. But it with their draft position and the way that the quarterbacks are currently talked about in the draft, like we're still far enough away from the draft that two teams could trade up into the top three for these guys, but I think some will. Washington is above. Washington's position to draft one of the the big three quarterbacks in the first and still have Carson Wentz play uh, while that while that quarterback learns, uh, but you don't have the pressure of trading up for Trey Lance, where it's every single week is why is your number three overall pick not playing quarterback? If you take a quarterback in the teens, people get it. Yeah, I guess, I guess that's true. You can do both. Try to do both. Is Carson Wentz the – I mean, he could be the second-best quarterback in the division. Could be. Uh, let's – man, no, nah, no, definitely not. I wouldn't – I'd much rather have Jalen Hurts as my quarterback. Okay. There are quarterbacks falling off the options list for Pittsburgh, Carolina, Seattle. So I will be curious to see the market for Mitch Trubisky. Yeah, and the Jimmy Garoppolo trade market. I think if you are San Francisco, you're doing it right. Um, wait until Jimmy seems a little bit shinier <laughs> in this free agent landscape, and the dreams of the Russell Wilson to Sean Watson fades away. I would imagine the Watson situation works itself out before Jimmy G gets traded. Yeah, the Watson situation is the most important one for the the rest of the dominoes to fall. Uh, Trubisky, there's been a lot of buzz that he might go to New York to compete for the starting job, and that's the connection to Brian Dable, who just came from Buffalo, right. where Trubisky was. Um, that I think, surprised me. Are you right? I, I, I have the same thought. I've heard enough. I've heard it enough times from enough reliable sources yeah. that I think there is, you know, real uh, fire to the smoke there that he could go. But when I heard that, I was like. I think you can go out and get a starting job. Yes. Why sign where you've got to compete for one? Um, if you could be the starter for the Colts versus try to be the starter for the Giants, do that. Yep. Um, the the Steelers, who are desperate for a, for a quarterback, the rumors have been all along that they prefer to do it through the draft, so they might be happy right now. I think they will. A team like Washington, who has been mock drafted a quarterback in every first round that I've seen, now it's like, oh, great, one fewer team to compete um, that's trying to get a first-round quarterback. I don't think there's anything that's going to give me more joy than Mason Rudolph believing he's competing for a starting <laughs> job when no one else around him thinks he is. Right? Like everybody's going to know that the rookie's going to start. Sure, you are, Mason. Keep keep working at it. So yeah, I think the draft does look like the likely situation for Pittsburgh. Might be the likely situation for Carolina as well. We shall see. Mike Williams, we just had our free agency prediction show. We were all pretty sure he was going back on a at least a franchise tag. Yeah, I didn't know Three he was going to get the bag. Three-year, $60 million contract. Good for you. You can't paint a better picture for him, right? And not just the money, but like, you. where do you want to go? Oh, great quarterback system, I know. Yeah. Be a major target, $60 million or $40 million guaranteed. Yeah, great for Mike Williams, great for Justin Herbert. Um Great for fantasy, for Great Mike for Russell Williams. Wilson and everyone in the division. Yay. More points, please. And uh, Lions, they, they made their big splash, guys. Mm-hmm. Josh Reynolds, two years, $12 million. Whew, they did it. They done <laughs> did it. They got their wide receiver fixed. Um, there have been a lot of uh, reports lately that they are preparing to go hard after wide receivers, whether that's first round capital at the, at the wide receiver position or in free agency. Uh, so... That would obviously ding the value of Amon Ross St. Brown if if they were to go out and make a splashy, you know, trade for a big name guy or uh, spend another first round high capital. Amon Ra, who right now seems like, oh man, he might be a superstar. He might not. 
I can't help but think they're making a splash at the wide receiver position. Oh yeah, they, I I I think they will. Jared Goff's contract says that bringing in a quarterback this year might not be the best time. Any other news that I skipped over? A lot happening. Maybe even more by the time you're listening to this. So if if there are if there is more news, we'll cover it on the next episode. But anything else that I'm forgetting, Brooksy? Nothing yet. Okay, you guys want to jump into the mailbag? Yes. Mailbag. Mailbag. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So smooth. <laughs> All right, if you have a question for the show, you can go to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. There's a submit a question button. You can also send us a voicemail question, 302-464-TFFB. Let's begin with a voicemail. Hey, ballers. I'm changing my redraft league into a keeper league. I was curious on what you guys thought as to how to easily do that, especially from a rules perspective. Appreciate you. Love the show. So I'll jump in for a second ideally when you're going to do this, it's nice for the league to know a year in advance. So if it, yes. this is more of a message to other leagues that aren't doing it actively. Like if you have that as a plan, announce it now, if you're going to do it next off season, because it may change the transactions and the rosters that your teams have and maintain during the year. That being said, do you have any tips on an approach for the transition right now? If he's going to do it, yeah, I mean, if you are transitioning, it's it should be pretty straightforward, right? There's um, several different ways to start a keeper league. You can have it just be like our keeper league. Our main league of record is a keeper, and we keep three total players every year. We franchise one player, and then we get to pick three others from a different position that all go into a lottery, and we lose one of them at random. Um, and and then and then the draft is just from there. Um, I, I think the majority of keeper leagues, you're going to uh, have it be you keep a player for the cost of where you drafted them, and if you keep them a year after that, it costs more. Um, so it, it's just a matter of you and your league deciding what kind of rules you want to have, and then you and then you just implement it. We do have an article up on the fantasyfootballers.com written by Jeff PP Pants Greenwood, yes. so you, you can go yes. check that out. It's all about you know changing a redraft into a keeper. That's that's such a good proper nickname. Well, that's that's his. Uh, he's known as that. Oh, yeah. I know. He's peed his pants so many times, <laughs> um, but he did he did a much better job on the article. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, the article's better than the nickname. <laughs> yeah. And it's better than actually peeing in your pants. Yeah. 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 Uh, which he will do when we play pickleball against him. Uh, all right. Instagram question: What is Travis Kelsey's dynasty trade value? Oh man. I mean, the clock is ticking. Yeah. Travis Kelsey is, is to me, the toughest dynasty decision right now. I don't know if you knew this, but where he goes now, there is another person that follows him with a full-on clock. <laughs> and you hear the ticking wherever he goes. Yeah, and he just keeps dominating. Yes. We have, the clock keeps getting closer. Yes, it does. Mike and I uh, co-manage a dynasty team where we have Travis Kelsey. We're the back-to-back -back champs. Oh, I knew um, that was not going to get well, left I mean, left come on. Out. Champ going to champ. Yeah, champ, champ. Um, and I'm, I mean, I have tried to get rid of Kelsey. Not get rid of him, but I, I am trying it's, to. It get fair value for a 32-year-old tight end. Yes. Uh, if, if you can flip a Travis Kelsey into either a um Mark Andrews or Kyle Pitts you're going to you're going to have to pay more it's not yes. you're not going to be able to trade them straight across but if you can uh take Travis Kelsey plus another piece or a or a draft pick and and go to Mark Andrews I would do that in a heartbeat because you're not going to have this level of elite production in future years maybe you get it one more year um, but even the greats, Tony Gonzalez, who played and was great for far past age 32, that was still the drop-off year, and I don't think you, – you just don't want to hold the bag once it's dropped off. And it hasn't dropped off at all yet. So try to, I, try to get something for him now. There have been four total top three tight end seasons put up by a tight end who's 33 or older. So, like, Travis, Travis Kelsey is an outlier. So let, let you can start with that, that it would not surprise me if Travis Kelsey with Patrick Mahomes 
at 33 and 34 is still a very viable fantasy tight end. It would surprise me if he's still like the number one or number two. So it's you got to make that decision right now of are you in a win now mode? Because if you're in a win now mode, Travis Kelsey is a, an ultimate advantage for your dynasty squad. But it's, it's such a tough call of when to trade him. Let me let me explain my train of thought that I just went through that left me Please do. that left me laughing when you were talking about that very astutely, might I add. I wanted to come here and say, well, let's think about the contribution Rob Gronkowski made. And is there a world where that's the transitional type of universe for Kelsey, where you are still winning the position, right? Mm -hmm. Then I looked up how old Rob Gronkowski is (laughs) and discovered that he is very much the same age (laughs) as Travis Kelsey. They are mere months apart. So... Which shocked me because I think you look at Gronk and maybe it has to do with looking like you are being you're a robot running down the so field he, because he goes into the football field with a full suit of armor. Yeah. Also because he already <laughs> retired years that, ago. But to, to to think about that is I wanted to come and say, well, look at Gronk. I mean, he at thirty six right. or thirty seven <laughs> at thirty seven. Look at the impact he made. Oh, busted. And then, <laughs> Ah, oh, busted. It's and me. I'm 32-year-old and Rob Gronkowski. He's 32, and he retired to not be a Detroit Lion. So uh, it just – at your point about how many seasons like that have happened, you said four seasons. I wonder how many of them are Antonio Gates and Tony Gonzalez because – Yeah, they, they you know, are. And, and Tony Gonzalez, when he was a top three tight end, it wasn't special. It was just enough volume. But, you know, he's not going to dominate – Forever, it's just they're still human beings. The body gets older. It Ain't gets that slower. the truth? Just ask Al. Uh, <laughs> let's go to another voicemail. What's up, ballers? This is Reese from up in Saskatchewan, Canada. Oh, Got bonjour. A question for you: Keeping two out of these three running backs, Antonio Gibson, J.K. Dobbins, and David Montgomery. Let me know which two to keep. Love the show. Thanks. That's a tough question. Very. And we didn't we didn't talk about Gibson. And any fallout there from Carson Wentz? I think it's pretty neutral, honestly. Yeah, I I would agree it's neutral, if not better. I I think uh, See, it's, I could go it, the other way. You think it could be worse to have Carson Wentz? I think it could be worse because of capability at the position to throw the ball more and not have to lean on Gibson and not be afraid. Look, Heineke was a twenty touchdown, fifteen interception guy. Wentz doesn't throw a lot of picks, so. How much of the game, you know, that's just the train of thought I, I, I went into. Yeah, I mean, I get saying like, oh, we could throw the ball more. We don't have to rely on the run. But that just means your offense is better, more scoring opportunities. Um, obviously, Jonathan Taylor was pretty good with uh, Wentz. Granted, you heard it here first. Jonathan Gibson Taylor. is Jonathan <laughs> yeah, Taylor. I tried to cut you in off. In Washington. Tried, tried even, to get ahead of that one. But, even um, I will not say that. But I mean, So who do you hold here? I mean, I, it's hard because Dobbins is a real wild card. Well, and I feel like Gibson is a wild card just because of the question mark of will they add another running back. There's been reports or rumors that they you know, might want to add another uh, important running back piece there. To me, Monty is in. David Montgomery, I, I think he's been solid. There's no reason to suspect that um, he won't continue to be good. So he's my locked-in guy. And if you have to make this decision now, which if you don't, don't. Um, wait until after the NFL draft and free agency. Uh, that will give you a lot more clarity between Gibson and Dobbins. But if you have to make it now, I'm going to go Gibson. I'm going to take the volume of Antonio Gibson. Uh, with Dobbins coming off the ACL, he should be, you know, as recovered as you, as Gus. you, you <laughs> could possibly be. Yeah, but Gus Edwards is still there. Uh, Lamar Jackson is still prolific at the goal line, so I. I would side with the volume for the other two guys. And don't forget the practice field. I mean, that's a big consideration yes, for yes. J.K. Dobbins. Mm. Instagram question from Buckeye60 says, should I trade Kelsey now in Dynasty? Oh, look at this. Well, he- So that we answered that question. <laughs> yes. I, that question was... That's on me for yeah, not noticing that question was a follow-up. To be fair, it is, it is a question that was bracketed with the other one with a highlight that says... Mm, that's not a bracket, Mike. Uh, I'm well, not going to give it a bracket. Yeah. I think I think I'll leave Mike's side here. 
Oh, no, it's on me. I admit it. It's on me. Yeah. But anyways, there was also a highlight of saying multiple people asking about Travis Kelsey. I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> Twitter, Thomas. Am I, do I have permission to ask this question, Brooks? Yes, Only sir. if you haven't asked this one yet. <laughs> okay. What's That's the highest one. rookie pick you would trade for Kareem Hunt? Ooh, uh, that's really is interesting. It 110? Oh. Yeah, I mean, I I do think it is probably a back end uh. first. I my first thought was a was the 201, right? Like, okay, I'll trade a second rounder for him. But then when push comes to shove, and I'm at the back of the first in a in a not necessarily loaded draft class, there are I I, I think there's There's interesting players. Yes, and I think there's about, you know, six to eight really interesting players depending on how the draft landing spots go um but the the end of that first round 9 10 11 12 Kareem Hunt was dominating before he got injured last year Kareem Hunt is a great football player he will be turning 27 this year yeah he is a little bit older but I I still I mean you you know that Kareem Hunt is going to be useful and valuable he is the safer option not the ceiling option right if you land and um you know hit on a running back in the in the rookie draft well great he's going to have a lot more value than cream hunt going forward but at the back of the first there's this year's running backs like if you're trading for cream hunt i'm going to presume you need a running back and this year's running backs there's really three running backs that are really good they're not getting to you at the 110 and if you're going to reach for a running back there, there's there's not a running back in this draft class that I can imagine at the end of the first that I would rather have over Kareem Hunt. So what's the line for you? I'm going to go nine. I'm going to go 109. I can dig it. I'll go 109. Yeah, I don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> wow, man, I, you're brilliant. I, I I don't hate it, but like after the draft, you could see multiple guys drafted on day two. Yeah, I'm and wondering. then all of a sudden you're like, well, there's Tampa. There's, these are some good shots at, at a running back at the back of the first. You guys have any thoughts on Kelsey's dynasty value or mm. anything like that? 32-year-old Travis Kelsey? 32. Did you know he's the same age as Gronk? <laughs> <laughs> Here's a good one. Twitter, Warren wants to know, what are your thoughts on Darnell Mooney? A lot of rumors on the free agency show of, you know, whether it's Christian Kirk or an Amari Cooper trade, somebody, maybe it's a draft, they're going to get another weapon to replace Allen Robinson somehow, some way. To help Justin Fields, right? They have to do it. Yes. Mooney, Mooney is a lot. I think he's a lot like Amon Ross St. Brown in that they're not likely the prototypical numero uno, right? They can be a very impactful like 1A, 1B situation, but I don't know if I see Mooney, as much as I love him, former my guy, being everything there. Yeah, he's such a talented guy, but at his size, it's really... You know, he reminds me of like a John Brown back in the day yeah. where John Brown had his had value to fantasy. But that's not, you know, that's not the end all be all. Um, he's not a dominator. I don't think he's going to be a, a wide receiver one type um, because I don't think he's going to have massive amounts of volume. He's not going to be a 150 target guy. Um, he was a 140 target guy this last season. Yeah, but this last season was like there were no other options. Allen Robinson was on his last leg or they were not going to him. And, and so if it goes into the season where it's this receiving core, sure. But I, I mean, like we've been predicting and most people have, I, I have to imagine they're, they're going to go hard after wide receiver. Cause they just, I mean, what's their depth chart right now? Like Allen Robinson's gone. So it's Darnell Mooney. And then, well, I, he could, I mean, his pace from the bye week I don't know if, you guys realize this. This his second half was great. Seventy-two target pace. Yes. The, they really turned the offense to him. I I love Mooney. I think looking at it though, is he a buy for you in Dynasty? Yes. Yeah, I would go. Would you after wait him. for them to sign somebody and then go get him? Uh, if you if you think that that free agent acquisition will devalue him a little bit in the in just terms of his like perceived stock, I agree that I don't think Mooney is a classic number one wide receiver but him being a 1b and a, my belief in justin fields i i believe fields will progress and become one of the better franchise quarterbacks in the league in the next few years if uh if they picked up amari cooper for example is that a situation where you would take the better draft value of mooney because he would certainly go behind cooper in a draft 
Is that kind of how you would Pro see that? Probably. It depends where Cooper's going, though. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, looking at the uh, the other target options there from last year, it was Marquise Goodwin, Demir Bird, Jimmy Graham. You kind of said Demir Bird's name a little a little bit more disrespectfully than I thought. Yeah, you no, could. I yeah, I, mean, I think it was perfect, perfectly said. I mean, they yeah, the, their wide receivers are free agents. Yeah, they don't have they it's don't Mooney, have any Daz Newsome. So like right now, it seems like Mooney can be a two hundred target guy, but. There's just no way that they don't go hard after this position in, in the draft and free agency. Mike, Obviously, if it's the draft, like if they go and they spend a first rounder on a wide they receiver. They don't have a first. Oh, do they, they do not. No, that's they, right. Because of the field's trade. Okay. Um, so, you know, a second. Uh, they, they go and they spend They don't their have a. <laughs> no, do they have a second round pick this year? Okay, yes. we've got it. Yes. Um, you know, and, and that's how they approach it. Well, then Mo Mooney will be phenomenal. But if they go and get someone like an Amari Cooper. I mean, I guess the reality is there's not a lot of options. Well, I, Mike is making the point that he has a confidence in Justin Fields, which translates into long-term confidence in Darnell Mooney. Mm -hmm. So that could be a gauge of your acquisition prowess in a dynasty league yeah. where if you have confidence in the Fields development, then you are buying low. It, it would almost be like getting Mike Williams – a year before Herbert yeah. Yeah, yeah, ascended yeah. him. Yeah, but walking through this, really talking about Darnell Mooney and thinking about the situations, yeah, Amari Cooper, assuming he's a free agent, would, would be very bad for him. But who else is there? Christian Kirk. I mean, if Christian Kirk comes, I'm I'm I very Kirk, happy with yeah, Darnell Mooney. Yeah, Kirk's not a number one type of player either. He's no. A, he's a complimentary, a good So maybe I'm guy. higher on Mooney than I, than I thought I was just okay. because of – the options that present themselves to the Bears this offseason say that Darnell Mooney needs to be... What if they re-sign Demir Bird? <laughs> then they've made a bad decision. <laughs> that is going to do it for the Fantasy Footballers. You can subscribe over on YouTube, youtube.com slash the Fantasy Footballers. And this is your last chance to get the UDK with a shot at the Listener League at ultimatedraftkit.com. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.